Did Jesus die on the cross, or was it Simon of Cyrene? Well, I wasn't there at the time. <laughs> but from all accounts, according to one of the manuscripts found in Nag Hammadi, <coughs> purportedly uh, written by Jesus, which is part of the explanation in my Sharing the Quest book of how he escaped the crucifixion. Um, he said he watched from a cave while someone else was crucified in his place. Now, people don't like to think this is the, the attitude of Christ. Um, but this is a, uh, from a, a scroll 2,000 years old, which hasn't been tampered with by the clergy. But we cannot say for sure that this is a, a genuine uh, article. But on the other hand, Jesus had a twin, Didymus Thomas. He was a total look-alike of Jesus. And in the Bible, the soldiers ask um, Judas to point out who is Jesus. Now, he was so well known to thousands of people in the town he couldn't be mistaken, so why would they ask him if there wasn't a twin that looked so very much closely like him? And it seems there could possibly have been a switch and Jesus kissed the false Jesus or the twin who was so enamoured with Jesus that he didn't want his master to be crucified and he may well have taken the place of Jesus. But again, this is all speculation. But whoever it was, he did not die on the cross. It takes about 12 days for somebody who's crucified to die with protracted agony. But as Pilate's wife seemed to be very fond of Jesus, she got Pilate to organize that he was crucified, or somebody was, only two hours before Shabbat, which is the time that all crucified beings had to be taken down off the cross for the holy day. So he was only up two hours, there was no, whoever it was, there was no way that he could die within two hours. And the same goes for the two thieves. That's why they broke the legs of the thieves so that they died straight away. Normally, when on a spear, they put a vinegar-soaked uh, sponge up to the nose of the people who were being crucified in order to shake them awake and make them suffer more, be aware, instead of dropping off to sleep. When Jesus, or whoever it was, was offered the sponge, immediately he went unconscious. So it's quite obvious that there was some drug on the sponge that rendered him unconscious. The whole, it was all plotted very nicely. And so when the spear was poked into his side to see if he was alive or not, and he didn't move, of course, because he was out. In any case, he studied in Benares with um, yogis who taught him suspended animation. So that is another thing that could be part of his um, not move moving. But it is said blood and water spurted out of the place where he was poked. Now, anybody who is dead the blood co coagulates immediately and there is no spurting. 
So he was evidently alive if blood and water spurted out of his body. So somebody was still alive just after two hours, so he wasn't, his legs weren't broken, so they said, oh yes, he's dead. And when the, they went to Pilate and said, oh, he's died, he says, my God, what, already? Not possible. And so then he was taken off to the tomb, which happened to be in the garden of his uncle Joseph of Arimathea. And obviously his own guards would be on the tomb so that he could be taken away directly afterwards and carried to the secret room where he was hidden behind a panel and the next day appeared among the disciples who were having a supper together. And then he, the story goes that he rose up and walked where um, Mary Magdalene lived and uh, suddenly ascended from there, having nail holes in his feet, and he walks to this next town and suddenly ascends from there. And then the story has it, he comes back a fortnight later and cooks a fish supper on the beach and has a barbie with his disciples, which is utterly ridiculous and obviously a piece of manuscript that a scribe has found and oh, he's missed this out, so he tacks it onto the end of the story as though he's come back again. But all the, the Gospels, which are called synoptic, are not synoptic at all, which means they're all the same, are all completely different, and they all give completely different stories, completely different endings, completely different beginnings. So <coughs> it's a mass of fabrication and... 99% of the Bible is instigated by Paul. So it's not Christianity at all, it's Paulianity. All the ideas of Paul were put into the Bible story. And the Bible story itself is um, a copy of something that happened 400 years before with Mithra, who was the Persian Messiah. And he was born in a manger. He had three wise men following a star, and they brought him frankincense, <coughs> myrrh, etc. And he had 12 disciples. He was crucified. He was put in a cave and rose on the third day. Now, where have I heard that story before? <laughs> and half a dozen other famous people, including Alexander the Great, had the same things. Wise men following a star, etc., etc. So it's a huge mythology and almost impossible to determine the reality of what really happened. And even some are doubting if there ever was a man <coughs> called Jesus. Well, there wasn't. His name was Yeshua ben Yosef, um, if he existed. But the majority of stuff that is put into the mouth of Jesus is from the great god Thoth of the, of the Greeks, um, from Greek temples, from Greek poets, from Abyssinian anchorites, from the Egyptian Book of the Dead, and from many other sources. It was all compiled by a scribe called Ezra and 72 associates, which decided what would compose the Bible. So people who are fanatically fixated on the Bible as the word of God are really off the wall not knowing anything about the history of how all this came together. And afterwards, Jesus is known to have gone back to the Agori Mountains in Afghanistan, where he was 
to minister to one of the lost tribes of Israel, the Beni Israel, as Genghis Khan uh, talked about them in his um, biography when he went over the mountains into India. And he, he came across the lost tribe of Joseph. And Jesus said, that, that is my, my job, to go and look for the lost tribe. And in ancient times, when King Nebuchadnezzar uh, savaged the whole of Judea, and he got lots of Jewish prisoners and took them as slaves to Babylon, when Babylon fell, many of them fled into the Agori Mountains in, um, in Afghanistan. And even now, they all have Semitic features. They follow the feast of the Passover. The, their names and the names of the villages in that region all have Hebrew root names. And even um, Jesus' tomb is said to be in Srinagar, where he died around 160 years old. And the tomb of Moses is on a nearby hill as well. So there's a lot of um, evidence in old writings from the Arabs and the Afghanis and the Indians to corroborate uh, this particular aspect of the story. So you can make up your own mind.